Hi, my name is Ida Abdelkani, founder and CEO of Ability to Engage and co-host of the Learnings from Leaders podcast. And I'm so excited to be here together with all of you today to discuss a community at its best, the PNG Alumni Foundation. It is my privilege to be joined here together with Sarah Woods, the Executive Director of the PNG Alumni Foundation, and John Pepper, who I feel should be on the show. My next guest needs no introduction. I'm sure many of you remember training at the Johnny e. Pepper Learning Center. But here's a quick refresher, as he has so many accomplishments. He is the former CEO and Chairman of the Board of Procter & Gamble, former Chairman of the Walt Disney Company, former CEO of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, an early founding advisor and leadership circle donor to the PNG Alumni Foundation. And importantly, he is a friend and mentor to many of us alums and so many tuning in from around the world. I am proud to serve on both the PNG Alumni Network and Foundation boards because I get to solve problems with really thoughtful people like John and Sarah while doing good. If you're tuning in today, you've come to learn more about the PNG Alumni Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of the PNG Alumni Network. If you're like me, you may know about the network, but maybe you've heard a little bit less about the foundation. It's run by a small 15-person volunteer board, yet has a large impact. It's benefited in just the past three years. Are you ready for this? over 150,000 people. From delivering computers to rural schools, to providing job training to refugees, to helping women that have escaped bad situations find hope again. It all comes down to alumni coming together to do good for the greater good. Now, John, you've been a part of the alumni group and the foundation since its beginning. And I think as p and we all like to start with understanding the why. Why did you get involved? Well, Ida, the reason for my getting involved really boils down to really my life experience at Procter & Gamble and the Alumni Society, and that's my love for P&G people. It's visceral. From the very beginning, when I first walked in the door, almost 60 years ago, I pretty quickly discovered that Procter & Gamble was more than a company, more even than an institution. At least for me, it became a family. And it became a family because of the men and women I met. I liked them. They were great at what they did. And I came to love their values, values I proud, was proud to be part of. Uh, that affection is why I've looked forward to every alumni event, starting back in 2000 here in Cincinnati to the ones we've had in Rome and Geneva, most recently in Madrid. And here we are again. And doing it virally is not the same as being in person. <laughs> I still love the close handshakes and the hugs if we're allowed to still do that in this environment. But I've loved doing it, and why is simple. It's why many, many of you are here today, and that is you can reconnect uh, with friends you've known. We'll be able to do some of that tonight. And you're able to meet new people. And you learn things from stories that are told by people, and we've heard great stories this morning and lifted, I think, by the values at which they're living. You know, for a, I may be prejudiced, but for a long time I have felt there isn't another company in the world that could have an alumni association like ours. And the reason simply is because people generally don't care about their company hmm. the way we do, and perhaps they don't care about each other as much as we do. As to the Alumni Foundation, that came later. About eight years ago, we were in Geneva and a number of friends, including Ed Tazia and Deb Kilty and Mohan Mohan and Samir Hua, we got together and felt, you know, we've grown up in a heritage in PNG of doing good for others. Maybe we can do some good as an alumni association. So that's where it began, a small nucleus. And here we are, I guess six years after the formal establishment of it, but as you've already heard from you, Ida, we're doing great things. Well, the wow. depth of my commitment uh, to this, which was pretty good at the beginning, <laughs> has grown mainly because I've seen the good that it's done. I've seen projects fulfilled. People's lives changed. 
Well, I wanted to go back to something you just mentioned because it really caught me. The fact that the PNG Alumni Foundation was just started in 2015. You know, in some ways, that seems like a really long time ago when I think about technological investments, right? The first Apple Watch came out in 2015. I've gone from an iPhone 5 to a 7. I know I'm still a bit behind. Uh, but in all seriousness, a handful of years is really not that long to go from a vision to being operational to funding $1.4 million in grants. It's simply amazing. And Sarah, you just joined the uh, PNG Alumni Foundation about a year ago as an executive director, and I'm interested, why did you join? Well, first I'll say I am honored and excited to be here with you, John and Ida, and all that are watching out there. I was drawn to the Alumni Foundation because I enjoy startup ventures as they contemplate what their growth path is gonna be. The Alumni Foundation is only six years young. We have proof of concept and a vast potential to grow. Another factor for me is my strong belief and commitment to community service. And as both of you know, another treat in this is the PNG people. I love working with the PNG people. Globally, there are over 25,000 PNG alums in the alumni network and many more not yet connected. Many alums don't know this fun fact that the alumni network, the PNG alumni network, is one of the first corporate alumni associations established. We have amazing potential to do good together when we work toward the foundation's mission of sustainable economic empowerment. Our work has a bigger impact when we work together. Our connection makes a one plus one equals three equation. Sarah, I love how you just pointed out how the power of the network is truly exponential when we come together. But can you tell me a little bit more about this idea of what you mean by one plus one equals three? And also, I would love to hear about where the foundation's at today. Yeah, I'd, I like to think of the foundation as a force for good multiplier. We have alums who are doing good in their volunteer work, and then our grants enable them to do even more good which enables them to raise money and do even greater good out in the world. We give economic empowerment grants to charities where alums are already active volunteers. The goal is to build brighter, sustainable futures for people in need. We are multiplying the efforts of alums who are already volunteering and doing good. For example, let me tell you about Lucy Sheehan. She is a volunteer with Street Business School. They created 20, sorry, they created 2,000 new jobs through their entrepreneur training program. And the program is bringing women in the Sub-Sahara new careers and out of poverty. And as you mentioned, Ida, we have already awarded $1.4 million in 94 grants with, to alums who are volunteering in 26 countries throughout the world. That's, that is amazing. And for perspective, just over the last three years on that impact, our grants have created over 8,000 new jobs, started 5,000 new businesses, trained 15,000 people in new skills, and in total are benefiting over 150,000 people. Ida, I, I love something that you mentioned, and that's the impact that we have. Yeah, I really love, Sarah, this idea of the multiplier, as you explained it, this one plus one equals three. You know, hearing about all of the new jobs that are created, the new businesses, and the skill sets, I think it really underscores a really important point about the foundation, which is these grants are not handouts. They are creating effective, longer-term systems for more sustainable futures by empowering others with training and jobs. Sarah, you took the helm of the PNG Alumni Foundation right before the pandemic. Uh, I have a feeling it didn't go quite as you anticipated when you joined, um, but yet you've had your fastest year of growth ever, which I think is a little counterintuitive. So can you explain that to us a little bit? It's been really exciting. We have doubled donations and future commitments in the last year, and that means we've been able to expand our grants program. Um, we fund three times the number of grants than we did when we started years ago. We've also launched, launched an ambassador program, and what that is, is that's our fellow alums who are helping us build awareness and engagement and impact through social media, through their chapters, and through conversations with their contacts. 
awareness of the foundation is still low, and we are working to change that with the support of, a, of involved alums like you, John, and like you, Ida, so thank you. Thank you. I mean, I do think awareness is certainly a challenge for any organization, and even more so in a large landscape of nonprofits. You know, John, there are so many worthy organizations to be a part of, and you are certainly involved with many of them. I'm curious, how do you filter and why do you put your energy behind the Alumni Foundation? Well, Ida, you put your finger on the key question. I think um, every member of the alumni is working to give something back, probably financially. Why, the, why should this be a, be an the additional one, right? course? <laughs> exactly. And as my wife, Francie, and I have thought about this over the years, and we came to the conclusion pretty quickly, there are really three reasons. The first is the depth in which P&G people are involved in them. One, they make the recommendation to have it funded in the first place. Two, they are almost always a member of the board or an advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Third, they go out and continue to raise money for it. That's number one. Number two, and I think you'd expect this from the involvement of P&G people, these are well-selected projects. They're being measured against key criteria. One is their systemic impact. Um, another is, very importantly, are they well-led? You have a leader at the helm here who can make this work. Another is, do they have a credible business plan? Not just for today and tomorrow, but to sustain it. That's not easy. Oh, these are the two of the factors. And the third is the one you mentioned, and that's the multiplier effect. We have found that the projects being good as they are, and a P&G person helping promote more funding, we are getting three times and up to 10 times leverage of funding that comes behind this. So those three things, strategic, focus of what we're giving to, the involvement of P&G people, and this leveraging effect we've seen in finances has led this to become one of our annual gifts and with great pleasure. And we're delighted to see more people coming in behind it. Well, John, I love something that you were talking about here, about the, th the three key reasons that you're involved. It actually made me think about the startup world and how seed capital is needed to help fund that growth, right? Scaling yeah. and multiplying. Do you have any stories to share around this idea of that multiplication, this doing good amplification that you just mentioned earlier? I, well, I have a lot, but I don't have time <laughs> to tell very many. And you've already heard several of them. One I've been close to personally, though I wasn't the person that advanced the, um, the contribution, occurred in Guatemala, a place I've had other involvement in. Mario Contreras there secured a gift of $20,000. That may not seem like much, but it was leveraged immediately to $60,000. And what is done is delivered 60 computers to four rural schools, creating over 400 jobs, 1,700 family members are being helped, and 13,000 students are being supported. Wow. All this with the initial grant, and it was seed money, mm -hmm. being leveraged up to 60, really $62,000. There's another one, I won't go into the detail, time wouldn't permit it, but it's an amazing thing. This is Henry Ho out in Asia, working in Myanmar, India, and Thailand to create new businesses. He achieved, again, a $20,000 grant for us but he leveraged it to $200,000. And this is having an enormous impact. It's one thing to give you numbers, and we're sharing numbers with you, and they're important. But the major thing is what you mentioned, Sarah, and that's the impact on lives. Mm -hmm. um, not only jobs, but of course the jobs are creating self-respect. They're being able to provide food on the table, education, everything else. And it's this impact that is really keeps us going and wanting to promote this. Absolutely. I mean, John, I think you just, by underscoring some of these examples here, I think make it much more tangible and is helping drive home the human impact that the foundation has on the life of others and the multiplier that we've been talking about in full effect. I mean, what you just talked about with the students going from 448 to 13,000 people that were helped, that's a 30X multiplier for Co-op for Education. Not and, bad. Not bad, right? And with Joy Corps, <laughs> a 10X going from $20,000 in donations to 200,000. You know, leveraging P&G alumni, the network and its talent is so powerful. And Sarah, I'm sure you're probably leveraging some of this yourself. How is the multiplier affecting the Alumni Foundation's work? 
Well, it's really exciting. We're small and we're young, but we can feel the, feel the momentum building. Um, we were able, despite the pandemic, and with the generous support of many alums, we've increased our grants by 25% versus last year. Many thanks to all that donated online through the conference registration. For us, that was a new way for us to outreach for, to people. And for many of you, it may have been the first time you ever heard about the Alumni Foundation. Our focus is raising money to give away grants. And we've more than doubled those donations. That's thanks in part to loyal donors, plus new donors, plus the outreach support of 140 alums in 70 cities around the world. Still, we can only fund 10% of our grant requests. Those are the qualified grant requests. So we're working hard to build this awareness. In fact, we just created two new hashtags. You'll see PG alums for good and better together. Well, I love that the foundation is joining the social media game with those hashtags to raise some awareness. But Sarah, with that first one, I feel like maybe there's a double meaning in there. I'm glad you picked <laughs> up on it. That is intentional. There is a double meaning. We are alums for good. Once alum, always an alum. Yep. And we're alums doing global good together. In fact, we do good better when we work together. Uh, we support the alums in their passions, in their communities, where they're already doing good work. Here in Cincinnati, there's an interesting story with Mike Kremsar. He's an alum who volunteers and is a grant sponsor with Free Store Food Bank's free workforce development training program called Cincinnati Cooks. Our grant provided services for culinary training, and in the process, it had a double impact. The people who were trained were preparing food, and that food was then served to the community and in after-school meals. Mm -hmm. So it had a double effect. Mm -hmm. um, one young woman describes how she got involved in the program, and she was just coming out of an abusive relationship, and she found this new passion for culinary cooking, uh, for her cooking through this training. And two courses later, she's providing for her family, and she loves the new life that she has cooked up. People are passionate about the mission that they are doing, and we are helping them. We are providing jobs, training, and helping the, dis the economically disadvantaged. And we're fueled by that 44% increase in no new donors because we're new and small. We're here to support each other. Whether you're for less than a year or your entire career, what you learned at P&G stays with you for a lifetime. And for many of us, so do the relationships that you built here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about why I got involved, because I think that there's, you know, some interest from our under 40 alums. They wonder about the foundation and what they can do. You know, and my personal story is that I was given support myself through scholarships. It made college possible for me. It gave me a springboard for my future achievements. And I don't forget that. And honestly, I don't want to. You know, I had this realization years ago that I wanted to get involved in nonprofit work, but I was for some reason putting it into my future. And I had this aha that I wanted to get started earlier in life to see the good grow. And what I mean by that is to experience change and impact with others. I didn't want to wait until I retired to support others in creating their own springboards. And the Alumni Foundation gives me the opportunity to do this. That's cool. I, I get to work with thoughtful people like you and to really get a chance to meet alums that I didn't even know when I was at the company. You know, the Under 40 group, I had the chance to meet them at the past two conferences. And they are trailblazers. They are changing corporate America. They are starting nonprofits. They are scaling startups. And I realized that I just missed the energy of working with really smart people and having that energy around me. And so I actually reached out to those under 40 alums. And I really thought we could do more together. It started out with a simple email chain of what we could do. And with a little bit here and there, and a matching donation, we raised $10,000. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> we went Fantastic. from zero to $10,000 in a very short amount of time, which is enough to fund a grant. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think it's important to recognize that we're all juggling a lot of different priorities. 
right? We might be working on our retirement funds, our college funds. Sometimes we're doing both at the same time. And it's important to simply start. There are so many ways to get involved. You can share on social media. You can volunteer on a committee. You can even organize a chapter fundraiser or simply get someone that you know that's an alum to apply for a grant. No effort is too small. In fact, I really believe in this idea that a rising tide lifts all boats. If you do better, we collectively, as a community, do better. That's right. And if I can play a small role in helping build that, I think that has a ripple effect or the multiplier, as you both have mentioned. And that, to me, is worth prioritizing. Amen. You know, simply put, I really think that the foundation just helps others help others. And so that's why I'm so energized to be here with both of you today, to be able to talk to all of you around the world about the foundation. And I'm especially inspired by the energy that we've actually had in the past year during the pandemic. You know, John, what do you make of the fact that despite the pandemic, the foundation has actually grown in the past year? You know, that might surprise some people. It did not surprise me. And this is kind of the way PNG operate. It's the way the company operated in this pandemic. We not only delivered tremendously good business results through thick and thin, having to be off online most of the time, but we did many other things, some of which you heard about from Mark and Katie a few minutes ago. Share the load, race talk, widen the, widen the span. One thing that I've learned about just in the last oh, month that I found really inspiring is what the FemCare Group has done down in Brazil. Now, for some time, they've been distributing free tampons and giving education to girls in school, but they have lobbied for and now effectively convinced the Brazilian government to provide funding for ongoing delivery of tampons and pads into schools that are impoverished. Wow. Now, they would not claim that they were the only ones that pushed this. They weren't. But PNG people behind that in Brazil has changed the landscape for girls in Brazil. This is the kind of thing we do. Uh, so I'm not surprised. And now we're seeing the same thing as you've reported with the foundation. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the midst of the pandemic, and we've doubled donations during the year. And I think the number of donors have gone up by 44%. Yeah. And heavens knows we need it. We do. The, that is, the people need it, yeah. uh, that we can help through these grants. Well, based on these examples, John, there's certainly a number of ways that people can get involved, but I think that raises an important question. When is a good time to get involved with nonprofit work? Is there ever a, a right time to do it? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not a perfect time. Yeah. That question brings me a smile because it takes me back to the first time I was involved in something outside of work, and it happened three months after I joined the company. Wow. 1963. My boss, Ralph Browning calls me into his office. He says, I have another assignment for you. I'm primed to go out and develop a new competitive combat proposal. <laughs> That's not what he had in mind. He wanted me to go out onto a local avenue, Eastern Avenue, and raise money for the United Way. Well, I never heard of the United Way. In Philadelphia, where I grew up, it was called Red Feather. Well, he told me what it was. <laughs> and I said, when do you want me to do this? He said, right now. I said, but Ralph, that's on work time. He said, we're behind goal. Today's the last day, and I want you to help close it. Well, I don't think I closed much of the goal, but I do know that was the introduction to 30 years of working with the United Way, except five years in Europe, until I eventually became the chair of the community-wide campaign. But more than anything you could note in terms of that, it brought me into contact with people who lived differently than I did gave me a sense, perhaps, of empathy I otherwise wouldn't have had. Mm -hmm. And it got me in leadership positions I probably wouldn't have had at P&G mm -hmm. at the time. Oh, that's one of the benefits that comes from this. Uh, you can't really, I think, put a timetable on this that makes sense. I think you do it when your total spectrum of responsibilities, in my case in those early years, there were two, raising a family, though I must confess my wife, Francie, had far more to do that, that, that than I did. And the other was to succeed at P&G. Mm -hmm. And I had to fit things into that. And everyone listening here has responsibilities they need to fit it in. Mm -hmm. But I'd urge that you not postpone it too long. Right. And if you see a project you think with a reasonable amount of effort you can advance, go for it. Mm -hmm. Or you can recommend funding for it from the foundation. 
have them push it forward. Because you get so much from this, not just, I think, the satisfaction we give giving back to people who are less advantaged than we are, uh, but the learning you have of other people. We've heard conversations today from Katie and Mark about understanding other people mm -hmm. through their eyes. Well, you really learn a lot about that by working with in connection with projects of the kind we've talked about here today. I've often said that I learned more about diversity and more about inclusion by being in nonprofits in my early years than I did at P&G. And I hope it helped me at P&G. Well, John, I certainly agree that a little goes a long way, as you mentioned earlier. You know, we have many requests that are in the 10 to 20,000 range that come to us. And this year we had over 40 grant applications that we could not fund. That means that we were turning away our PNG alumni peers. You know, $100 can fund a sewing machine for 30 women to have a sustainable year in Uganda. And $1,000 funds chef's uniforms and daily clothing for an entire class in the Cincinnati Culinary Training Program. And you can help us share this message. I know the majority of you tuning in have a social media account, if not several. So from being a social media ambassador to volunteering, there are many ways to get involved, and there's always more to be done. Now, Sarah, I'm interested. I just talked a little bit about this gap that we have in funding. What are you doing at the foundation to help close this gap? So interestingly, during COVID, we had to pivot from what was gonna be a, a live conference and then a hybrid conference to this virtual conference. So we had to think about things differently. How do we fundraise? How do we build awareness? How do we connect with each other? Today, we're excited to announce something new. This is a first ever thing for us. We have a new raffle that we're launching today. You, everyone in the audience, anyone, has a chance to win a 30-minute session on Zoom with some of our impressive speakers and award winners from the conference. We were wish we were here together in person and able to chat informally over coffee or dinner, mm -hmm. to share and learn from each other beyond the structured conference ses sessions. So we are profoundly grateful for the first 10 of our alumni visionaries who are each gener generously donating a Zoom session. It will be exciting to see who bids on Brack and Daryl, who bids on A.G. Lafley, Sylvia Davila, and more. The raffle starts now and runs through December 31st. Well, I am certainly going to be buying up some raffle tickets to increase my chances of winning some time with one of these great alums, and it helps a great cause. You can learn more about the raffle now via the link in the chat box. And please remember that all raffle and donations enable more grants to help fund that 90% unmet need that we have to create more jobs, more training, and economic empowerment. Well, I'm very excited to announce a unique multiplier effect right here, live, right now, that can help us fund more than 10% of grants. John and Francie Pepper are going to match donations to the foundation until the end of this year. That means that every single dollar you give is doubled. So thank you, John and Francie, for thank your generous you. donation. Truly, truly. You, you are showing us an example of being a force for growth and a force for good. And to the audience around the world right now, you can go to pgalums.com forward slash donate. I know many of us have year-end giving plans, and this is an amazing way to 2x your giving. And we understand that not everyone is in a place to give financially. We need your support, too. Follow us on social media to learn more about our grant recipients and get involved. And hashtag PG Alums for good and better together. You know, the PNG Alumni Foundation was started by a small group that simply cared about connecting and empowering communities. And the foundation has grown so much since then, really multiplying its impact and welcomes any and all to get involved to help drive the PNG Alumni Foundation's mission forward. Now, John, we love getting your pet perspective. So I just want to see, do you have any final thoughts for us? <laughs> well, I have a lot, but I'll try to confine it to two or three. Um, of course, everything for me starts with my belief in P&G, its values, its people. Uh, certainly during my 40-year career and now, blessedly, uh, 20 years, almost 20 years since I retired and being part of the association and the foundation 
have been a critical part of this. Perhaps you permit me one observation and one perspective. I think we'd all agree we live in a world where the level of trust in institutions that we deem to be very important has declined radically. I'm sorry to see that, and I hope it will be reversed. But as it is, this decline in trust, it seems to me, places special value in being part of an organization which you can trust. Mm -hmm. Trust in the people you're with. Trust in the values you all try to live by. And yes, trust that you can deliver a great result because of all of this. I'd submit that never has the importance of that trust been so important today in people, in values, and yes, the good that they can accomplish. Like all of you, I would guess I take pride in what P&G is accomplishing today, despite all the challenges. It is fulfilling the mission of being a force for growth and a force for good. As I said at the outset, for me, P&G is more than a company, more than a community, it's a family. As we think about what we've heard today, I'd like to share one other story with you. It goes back to a meeting I had, uh, really a lecture I gave, to um, a group of students in Bucharest, Romania. And I was there to introduce a book I'd written after I retired. And at the end, a woman stood up and said this to me, Mr. Pepper, if all you had was a paper napkin and you were asked to write on it what you would most want your grandchildren and children to remember, what would you write? Mm -hmm. Well, for a few seconds, that it was a real stumper. Mm -hmm. But I recovered. And here's what the three things I said I would write. And I bring this up because it came back as I've seen this conference. Mm -hmm. The first thing was believe in yourself, believe in your best self. And it seems to me this conference of experience is about things we can do to be our best selves. Mm -hmm. The second was do what you think is right. And the third was love people. Mm -hmm. And I think the conversation from Mark and with Katie had in it a lot of love people, and so did some of the conversations I heard earlier today. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Let me close by saying I'm glad to see this momentum in the foundation. I hope it will be driven further and faster quickly. We've seen it in statistics we can cite. It's most important to me because the people are disadvantaged far more than we are, and we can help them, even with small donations. We're touching and changing lives as a result of this. We all know it. We live in a moment when those like us who are relatively advantaged have the opportunity to help some of those who aren't. I'd close by saying thank you to the P&G employees. Mm -hmm. I understand we're on this one. Mm -hmm. I thank you for what you're doing for this great company. And I thank you for what you'll do to help fellow P&Gers be the best they can be by letting them know you care about them. And to the alumni, thanks for the support. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for being there. And I hope you'll take real heart in this two for one. Well, it's not two for one. Wait a minute. One, <laughs> one, for, one, one for one match that Francie and I agreed to do through the end of the year. Yeah. And we didn't put any limit on that. We may be sorry. <laughs> but I told them that there is no limit. So go for it. <laughs> and make it a great end of the year. And above all, I wish all of you, the engineers, alumni, students who are maybe on here, the very best of health. Godspeed. Thank well, you, John. Thank you, John, again. And I really want to underscore the amazing opportunity, as you just pointed out, to double donations to the foundation through the end of the year at pgalums.com forward slash donate, where $100 becomes $200 and funds employment for 60 women in Uganda. And John, actually, you don't know this, but we just found out last night about a group called Symphony, which was inspired by you and Francie's donations to the foundation, and they have donated $20,000 to the foundation. 
So an example of a force for growth and a force yeah. for good. We'll just start. <laughs> we are. Yeah, we've started. Now, thank you, P&G, for sharing this broadcast with current employees for the first time. To the P&G Alumni Foundation for the funding of the foundation's operational work to enable nearly 100% of donations to go to grants. And thank you, of course, John and Sarah, for being here today to thank discuss you, a community you. at its best. Sarah, the P&G yeah, Alumni yeah, Foundation. Yeah. Well, I hope all of you are feeling inspired today about the real exponential difference grants can make to empower those that need it most. If you're feeling energized and want to get involved, please do it right now. If you're like me, it goes on your to-do list, which is a black hole. So please don't let that happen. Truly, no effort is too small. One step from each of us makes a world of difference. And to close, I want you to hear that message directly from those supported by the Alumni Foundation's work. Sangeeta Poka, a Bhutanese refugee, and Yen She, a PNG alum and board member of the Asian Community Alliance, a grant recipient right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Please join us to amplify this impact because we really are better together. Asian Community Alliance is a nonprofit organization that serves all Asian community and Pacific Islanders in the Cincinnati area. We are the grateful recipient of three P&G Alumni Foundation grants to support our work in educational and job training for Asian refugees, immigrants, students, and seniors. Our mission is to educate, empower, inspire, and create healthy Asian families and communities. ACUA program and services are broad and grouped in three types workshop job training to build skills, personal growth, and resilience. Outreach for resources to provide programs and services to address tough social and mental health issues. Community ecosystem to find common grounds and mutual support for our communities. There are significant challenges in serving our diverse community which differ widely in culture, socioeconomic, educational, language, and religious backgrounds. I will share an example of a computer literacy program funded by our first grant from the PNG Alumni Foundation. Back in 2015, there were approximately 5,000 Bhutanese refugees settled in the Cincinnati area, and most struggled with the English language. Many did not have job skills needed for permanent employment. Learning basic computer skills helped the refugee build English language skills and learn how to use the internet for employment and more. We were totally delighted when we received the PNG Alumni Foundation grant. Before students could learn basic computer skills such as Word and Excel, they need a fundamentals first. They need information such as how to do a Google search for a job or a doctor, how to use YouTube to repair something, or how to register for an English class or use of Google Translate. We taught them how to complete a job application, compare prices, and shop wisely online. Skills that we often took for granted were all new skills for our refugees. The new computer skills help students build their own capacity, find solution, and build a new life in the digital world that they now live in. We applied the learnings from this program to many other classes for other communities. This grant had benefit far beyond the funds. We leveraged our annual 30,000 grant budget to significantly increase our funding in years that follow to as much as 250,000. We also increased the number of PNG and PNG alumni volunteers to support our program and services. In fact, we're grateful to many PNG and PNG alumni board members who work tirelessly in driving meaningful, impactful organization growth for our communities. We would like to thank two in particular, Dorothy O'Brien, one of our original founders for her generous ongoing financial support and her wisdom and Jennifer Negrath, another co-founder, for her leadership, passion, and commitment. I would like to introduce Sangeeta Pakwon, a Bhutanese refugee from Nepal, who greatly benefited from the PNG Alumni Foundation's training classes and was later hired as a project coordinator at ACA. Sangeeta? I'm delighted to be here today and share my story, and so thankful for Asian Community Alliance and to the PNG Alumni Foundation for the grant to ACA for computer training, I learned so much. In 2016, I took my first computer class offered by ACA at the local library nearby my house. It was great that I could walk to the library to take the classes. I learned many things during the eight-week class. I learned how to send an email, 
write over documents, search for important internet on the internet and more. My English also got better using the internet and I continue to learn more as the result of these skills which greatly benefited my life in so many ways. I am also using my computer skill to help others in my community. I have helped many people fill out uh, important papers and taught them how to get an email address and using the internet. I learned many new things from YouTube. I'm so glad that these computer classes helped me to grow in so many ways with these skills. I was hired by ACA and project coordinator. This skill also helped me during the pandemic. I want to thank the PNZ Aluminium Foundation for supporting ACA in developing these great training classes to benefit our community. These classes help us develop important education and job skills so we can grow as an individual and as a community. Thank you, SEA, and thank you, PNG. Thank you so much.